So this is simply an exposure, a pointing out, an explosion, communication of this which is simply all there is, nothing to figure out, nothing to become, no achievements or obtainments, no instructions, no paths, no progression, no processing, no nothing, just simply what's happening. What's happening is not really moving through time or space, not really moving through anything. There's no real movement or stillness. Everything is totally nothing at all. It's totally boundless. So time and space, consciousness, experience, these are just appearances. They have no substance or solidity to them. Everything is totally empty and full. Everything really is, actually, it seems undefinable. And so every word is everything appearing as words too. There's no real describing this or explaining it. Nothing is separate. So therefore, there's no real descriptive elaboration going on. There just is timelessness. Memories, ideas, appearances, perception, sensation. It's all totally immediately what's happening. It's not moving anywhere. It's not really coming from anywhere. There's no real momentum. This is timeless. It's spaceless. It's totally all-encompassing. There's no limitations or boundaries, really. Conditionality is an appearance. So this is simply abundant, chaotic in a way, wild. There's no real control. Separation is an appearance and within the sense of separation may seem to be a sense of control, a sense that someone is is in control here, someone's running the show, or maybe they're influencing even, which of course is a subtle kind of control, assertion that there's control, but there isn't. There's no control at all. So when there's boundlessness being everything, Boundlessness can, of course, appear as boundedness. It can appear as as confinement, a sense that something is is positioned, located, separate, finite, contracted, maybe concentrated. And that that, of course, like anything else, is what's appearing to happen. And when that seems to happen, it it comes with it certain things, certain things like feeling personal there's a there's a felt sense that everything is is sort of personal somehow and that it's happening to me so the distance of me knowing everything else that's happening relating to everything knowing about it one way or another through the perceptions through the thoughts the feelings the emotion relating to everything in this way is a separate experience relativity needs separation, it needs distance. And what can also occur is, is time and space felt as a solid reality. So there's a felt sense perhaps that someone's here, that someone is actually not just happening, but they are here, the felt sense of here, the, the spatial sense, it's felt, it's visceral. You could even say it's embodied. It feels like that spatial sense is in a body. And what also seems to be apparent is time is a is a real chronological line in which I'm moving on or through. So I'm moving from a past towards a future, like another sense of direction and position. And what might also appear to to seem to be felt as real is is control. Again, it, it's already been exposed as illusory, but but the sense of control feels real. It feels viscerally real for some bodies. And there the, the just seems to be a misinterpretation, really. The, the nervous system, the body seems to misinterpret the, the spatial sense as, as though someone is in the body and therefore they are in control of the body. But this is this is not real at all. It's just a felt sense that has been misinterpreted, it seems. And what's exposed is that that whole positional sense, the feeling of this being personal, moving through time and space, and married up with that maybe the sense that 
this can go somewhere, somewhere better. And with choice, I can move towards that better place. That's all exposed as illusory. So separation is exposed as illusory in every single way, not just as me and you and subject and object, but here and then, here and now, and now and, and then, and, and over there where I will be and cause and effect. So if I do this, then this will happen. All of these separate projections that seem to come out of that experience are all exposed as illusory. None of them are real. All there is is timelessness, really. It's totally immediate. So immediacy is the total absence of separation and distance, and yet that already is everything. So even the sense of separation is distanceless freedom, appearing to be otherwise. The sense that, that something needs to happen, that something needs to be figured out, that too is immediacy. It would seem to be immediacy in disguise, but but it is, you know, all ideas, everything, it's all inclusive. Everything that's happening is just totally immediately appearing. But it just might seem like that's not the case or that, that it's otherwise or, or that something still, even though this has been said perhaps hundreds of times, you know, something still feels like it needs to happen. That too is freedom. It, that does there's no validation that that needs to change or become or to, you know fix or solve it it's just what's happening there is only what's happening for no reason because reason and meaning needs time again so as the exposure just points out that all there is is timelessness immediacy spontaneity fluidity vibrant chaotic thisness which is not moving anywhere then therefore there's nothing there's nothing at all, and nothing needs to happen. All is already free, including the sense that something needs to happen. There's just freedom. That's all. There's just freedom. Everything is is this freedom, unconditional freedom. And this is not an achievement. It's obviously it's it's not an achievement. It's not an event. It, it's not some sort of state that anyone arrives at. It, it's a, in, if anything, it's like a, a sort of remembering on behalf of no one. I, I sometimes say it's a recognition, but it's not. A, it's not a recognition that objectively is had by someone. No word ever really accurately displays this because it's totally incomprehensible. But but it's sort of like this. Oh yes, this is already free. But no one ever says that or has it or knows it. It's it's the end of the whole knowing polarity dream, the, the landscape of the of the knower and the known things. It's just simply already this. So dialogue can happen, questions, answers, comments, responses, laughter, silence, whatever's happening is what's happening for no reason, nowhere to get to, nothing to do, nothing to be, no one to be, no one to go, just simply already freedom. Hi, Alexis. Okay. Hi. Um, it seems that paradoxically that uh, the more our, I mean, my own uh, apparent attachments uh, paradoxically feel the, the most separated, you know? It's the same energy. It's like uh, I'm attached to someone, for instance, and this is where I feel the separation is the same. It feels the same, unbearable. Um, you know, it's paradoxical. You see what I mean? Because we want, to, in a way, to relate, and we can't, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> so the lose lose situation, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was talking with Jim and. Uh, um, I said that, uh, I mean, except 
our own knowingness, we don't know anything. We don't even know our knowingness, by the way, but just itself, it's a very small loop in a way. We don't know anything. How can I know the wall? How can I, oh, my hair or your hair, whatever. It's just knowing is just a fantasy. I mean, it mm -hmm. doesn't even make sense when you really uh, try to approach it. But we consider it as a given asset, and uh, it's just uh, I was crying when you were talking because such a release in uh, in the simplicity. Uh, sometimes, but after the uh, the retreat with Jim, there was no more sense of me. But it just disappears, and then when it comes back, and I wish sometimes I just didn't have any glimpses anymore because there you know that there's nowhere I mean there's nothing to find but the seeking energy is is, is vibrant as this as this presence uh, seeming presence so it's uh it's uncomfortable there's no hope and uh, but it's okay too you know it's very contradictory in a way you know that there's nothing missing anything that there's nothing needing anything except the need itself that pretends it and even though you stop trying to find anything the needing energy might still be running uh, the show, not the show but yeah well, anyway the show yeah it's a show in a way it's just a fantasy so it's all very paradoxical hmm. There's no really question, I, I guess. So it's all the same questions in a way. Mm. So it's just the sharing of them. Mm. I mean, essentially, there is no I <clears throat> to be knowing. So if there's no I, there's there's no possibility for there to be knowing, really. There, there's no knowing that is actually on offer at all. The, the, the I, the position require, requiring distance and separation to exist, needs knowing knowing and knower is it's inseparable and yet it is the illusion of separation it, it totally depends on separation and knowing depends on separation but there is no position there's no center that could move from that center to know anything else so so there's no i therefore there's no knowing or known or knower no subject object so and there's no separation no distance no subject object there's there's just nothing nothing at all yeah no. they, they coexist in a way you know it's fun. Yeah, yeah in a way but that but that that is the total illusory codependency yeah. yeah yeah so even these words are just everything is unknowing everything it's just all unknowingness appearing to nothing exactly exactly and the discomfort is it seems to be like uh, in a way it seems to be like a byproduct of the separation sense being exposed as totally fantastical illusory insubstantial yeah, yeah but before we leave the in the fantasy land sense felt of uh, the, the felt sense of uh, hereness and thereness, therefore, um, which well, gives... no, one, no one leaves the fantasy land. <laughs> <laughs> you are the fantasy land, which yeah, yeah, yeah. already isn't yeah. real. Yeah, yeah. Um, what I want to say this contract, I was just addressing, uh, trying to address this contracted energy of hereness. Uh, at this, at uh, simultaneously, there is the tendency to leave itself because it's just a like a balloon you press and the, the same strength goes the other way around. But it just plays with itself only, you know? I mean, it's so, ever, ever, it's, uh, it's the same, like resist, it feels like resisting something or someone, but it's just resistance uh, to itself, to itself going out, you know? It seems like, I mean, it feels like that as the contracted energy appears it, it, hmm. in me because my body is very, Times in a way it has always been, and the struggle is within itself. It's not there is no struggle, by the way. It's the same hereness that goes that wants to 
mm. in the story. So what is suggested is that it's not resisting anything, it is resistance. Mm. The, yeah. the sense of position is the appearance of resistance. There's no even separation between me and resistance or resisting it's not like me can stop resisting or can know about resisting. It is resisting. Mm -hmm. And searching, right? I mean, searching, not something neither, but the searching energy is the same, exact mm. same. Yeah. Resistance and seeking is the dream of separation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because there's already no thing to be resisting anything else. There's no distance for there to be something to be resisting something else <clears throat> so it's just nothing it's just energetically nothing appearing as whatever it is whether you call it resistance or agitation angst disease dissatisfaction it's or just, joy is the same energy it's it? well it's all nothing yes it's all nothing being whatever it is <clears throat> labeling joy and anger and sadness and agitation you know or even that sort of implies that there are separate things called joy and anger and agitation but there's no separate things so there's no labels there's no definitions there's just nothing and none of it is a problem and it's all just simply what it is No obstacles already. Thank you. You. Hi Alexis. Hey. I, I it it looks like a, a lot of people um that that they are uh, I don't know how to say it um so that the attention goes to the um, to the contraction but it's it's just tiny and meaningless that's yeah everything is yeah yeah there's no real time there's no real now and then so there's no real meaning to anything you know if everything is already completely whole complete boundless there's no meaning yes exactly yeah wow thank you so looking for something to happen looking for this to become to move towards a, you know it, it all requires meaning and purpose and meaning and purpose all requires that or requires limitation really it requires a, a sense of something being bounded that can become boundless you know it's it's just none of it's real so even the sense that meaning and being is happening as as though that's some sort of process that you know that this like i'm coming to meetings and i'm having some sort of opening up resonating and basking and it all see it all feels like it's moving through time that that's not real either nothing there's nothing to hang on to this is already complete it's already done Hi, Alexis. Hey. So, um, it's my first time, um, my first meeting with you. So, yeah. Um, even if it's totally illusory, the message was was heard one and a half year ago. Uh, that there is only what is happening, and there is definitely a shift 
I cannot go back to how it was. There is no going back to how it was before anymore. And a lot of things, everything dropped. Everything dropped. The skin energy um, stopped all of a sudden. And um, there was just so much time to to use for anything else in the end. Um, the sense of location and heaviness, the density also fell away. Um, but also all the positive things fell away and there was just uh, uh, there was just nothing anymore. And uh, the, the references I had before or whatever I could I could hold on to um, just died. It's a uh, really sense of death and um, and um, yeah, I felt, even to say I now is not so true anymore. It's just uh, and uh, yeah, there was a sense of liberation back then. Um, um, and right now, um, I feel like bored, like there is no sense of purpose anymore, there is no purpose, there is no interest, and it's like, I'm not dead, nor I'm alive, and also a uh, feeling of grief of how it was before when there was this aliveness and drive to get something and um mm -hmm. and yeah it's just like i'm waiting for the body to to die you know because there is nothing else to there is nothing to reach nowhere to go and of course, there's a sense of discomfort, but um, nothing can be done. And, <laughs> and there's no doer. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So it's just whatever, whatever is happening. Mm -hmm. And yet, I feel this impulse to ask for help, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it sounds like there's um, what feels like a sort of starvation. The starvation of the seeking energy, feeling like it could be going somewhere, making progress, but it's already been exposed that there's no one at the centre of that, so there's no, there's no right or wrong way to be because beingness is everything. There's no right or wrong way for anything to be because there's no controller. There's no one at the center of any, anything. There's just immediacy. There's just what's appearing. And it's already free and it's already timeless. Therefore, it's already complete. And perhaps there's a sense, <clears throat> what might seem like a subtle lingering sense that someone is still feeling like that, that they don't want that to be the case. They don't want that to be true because that takes away all sense of purpose, all direction, all hope or meaning to anything, because if everything is already complete as it is, including my pain, then I, I, even if I was in control, I have nothing to do with. I, I have no where to go with that, and so it's, it's, it's exposing that there's nowhere to go, there's nothing to do, but also that there is no one to be going or doing or being even. It just is what's happening. And boredom would seem to be like perhaps a start a felt sense that something is being starved of stimulation. And what better way to stimulate than to feel like I'm going on a path steadily towards a projected destination in time? It's that is a sort of it's a tremendous stimulation. I mean, it's incredibly exciting when the body and the seek the so-called seeker is in that you know, feeling like they're going towards enlightenment or whatever, whatever it is. And so the, 
Yeah, so the boredom seems to be a starvation in that way. A starvation of all hopes and dreams <laughs> and and a total resistance to the simplicity of what's happening. And and boredom too, resistance, you know, dullness, everything is totally what is. It's all equally unconditional love. Oh, yeah. Hey. Can I ask Ariel something? Okay. So, Ariel, for you now, is, does pleasure or enjoyment not arise? Um, they do arise, but it's not sticking. Um, it's yeah. just okay. rising and just falling down. Interest for something rising and falling. It's a uh, like a wave <laughs> but, mm -hmm. yeah. but there's a kind of underlying boredom you were saying yes okay just wondered <laughs> because alexis seems to enjoy himself yes <laughs> <laughs> all right Alexis seems to have a mission. <laughs> Alexis, what's up? <laughs> you seem to have a mission, uh, kind of a purpose in helping. Oh. Yes. And this used to appear here, this wanting, longing to, to help others or in any shape or form and and now there is no, I cannot even help myself. <laughs> no. Yeah, there's no helping anyone and there's no, <laughs> and there's no not helping anyone either. Yeah. So there's no purpose in that way. Compassion is seeming to happen, but it's not owned by anyone. <clears throat> I like the, I like the definition that co compassion is, is, is that which kills the dream of separation. I mean, it, that obviously is a complete story. It can't be said enough, but but it, it's there's something sweet about that, I think. Something sweet. Yeah. And there is joy, yes. There is joy. Not for anyone, just joy. I have another useless question. Oh, I like useless <laughs> questions. <laughs> I mean, well, I don't, but uh, they keep popping up. Um, when this message or this possibility is felt like viscerally as being the only possibility, mm -hmm. um, it, there seems to be, a, a, there seems, of course, it's just a story and the reality is also the, the the sense felt of reality of the oneself and the world and others and distance knowing time and space whatever uh they 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 how can that seemingly coexist with that possibility with feeling and resonating so much so mm -hmm. it seems uh it seems of course it's just uh i've uh, there not I, of course, one of these possibilities, there is no I, but both possibilities coexist. Well, not really. Mm. There's no there's no coexistence. Why is your no. useless question, of course? But well, why, uh, how I mean, come this so no, it's not useless? There's just um there's just 
you know, a response seeming to happen, that's all. And uh, but it's, it's clearing up the confusion, basically. And the confusion is that there's a coexistence between resonance and resistance, me and being and separation and immediacy and, and all this. And, and that what's exposed is that none of it is real and, and resonating can seem to happen, but but cause and effect is exposed as dream stuff too. So so there's there's no there's no sense that even resonance is happening as a result of hearing a message. There's no separation between resonance and meeting. There's no separation between anything. There's no between anything. There's no anything. There's just simply immediacy, which is nothing. And when there's a sense of separation, perhaps, it it interprets that what's going on here is that in the same way I went to a yoga class yesterday and I then became a bit more flexible and a bit more strong and a bit more calm, in the same way I did that, I came to a meeting and resonating was happening and I felt like less of a me. It can't interpret immediacy. Immediacy is uninterpretable. So what it does in a dream is interpret that there was a cause and effect and the cause was the meeting and the effect was resonance that there's a distance between two things called meeting and resonance basking bathing glimpsing expanding however you want to call it and and that's the way in which the dream the interpreter the dream of interpretation and seeking and separation interprets what's going on here and so if i go to enough meetings in the same way if i go to enough yoga classes i'll become really bendy and flexible and strong and you know sort of yogic <laughs> sort of centered and grounded if i go to enough meetings i'll i'll fall away completely it, it, it's turning it into a process again but resonance <clears throat> only it, it, it's incomprehensible it, it's not happening as a result of anything resonance is in a way that the clearness of nothing being everything it, it's the clearness of of there being no boundaries no separation no distance and that is totally unobjectifiable which is why even the word resonance would seem to be misleading because it can't it can't be labeled defined pinned down it can't be anything it, it's 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 too boundless to even talk about, therefore. And then and then all words and definitions just seem to fail or fall short of this incomprehensible non-thing that seems to be happening in meetings. <laughs> but it's not really happening. I didn't really mean the meetings. It's just the clearness of the message. Made the yeah, the clearness. But, yeah, the felt, the felt so, of this being the way it is, in a way. Yeah. It, there's no other possibility possible because it never made sense in this body mind that the the way I was no. told uh, I I it it made sense it didn't never until yeah. a year and a half ago I heard that it's just it doesn't come in I don't understand anything but it's the only possibility yeah. so it's so and then of course there has been glimpses and whatever you can you can call what or not and then the sense of location came back. Um, it's funny, it's just uh, when it's there, it's there, and it's not there, it's just that it. mm. it's obvious, as the lady before said, uh, there, there was no boredom in there. <laughs> it's just so simple and direct, just was yeah. attention about, really. Mm. And then seeking energy comes, and I know there's nothing to find or to seek, and there's no need at all. And then I just come keep coming back to this message because this is the only thing where I really feel home when there's a searching energy. It doesn't mean anything, by the way, these meetings. They don't mean anything to mm. the search, to the seeking energy. So it's very, very, very confusing sometimes. Yeah, the confusion would seem to appear when there's a sense that someone is hearing this because as, as far as the... <laughs> The unreal dream seeker separate self experience is concerned. This does not make any sense at all. And when it, and when there's no sense that anyone is hearing this, there's just hearing happening. It makes complete sense, but that's an unobjectifiable and unconditional obviousness. 
but that, but that that's the end of the one that's apparently trying to hear it the end of the one that's relating to what's being said as another object because what's what's being said has got nothing to do with subject and object therefore when a subject seems to be hearing this objectively it doesn't it, it doesn't make sense so there's no subject to hear this as an object there's no this as an object there's just hearing happening that is a confusion okay i uh... I hear you. Okay. Yeah, and yeah, I, I am. Um, it's very clear. I mean, you see what I mean. Whatever. Whatever. It's just <laughs> convoluted. Uh, okay. Thank you. In that regard, would you say that the know me thing would be the last thing? Just say that again. In the in regard to what you just uh, pointed out, mm -hmm. would you say that the know me thing object would be the last thing? The know me okay. thing. Know me object, like subject trying to find a know me state oh, right right yes as yeah. an object would be the last object so, because so... it seems that what what you have just mentioned was just so addressing this small loop mm. i'm in for a while i mean it's just uh, because you know i come to the meetings like trying to to get there you see what i mean and then there's nowhere to get and hearing that i objectified nowhere to get yeah it's just going on it's the only thing i again me cannot hear what's being said because nothing is being said exactly so it may be distorts completely what's being said and turns it into another kind of progression, another kind of journey and destination situation where one day I will be a no me. There's no such thing. I think it's incredible how it's... There's no you think there's no there's no arriving into non-separation there's no non-dual awakening or or realizations to be had by anyone this is the complete chaotic absence of anyone having anything or knowing anything becoming anything or unbecoming anything no no spiral path from samsara to lead up to nirvana where everything is crystal clear and palaces and pure lands there's just complete freedom, which is all there is. No me. There's no state called no me. No me is the absence of all states and experiences and events and knowing. And yet that is already what's happening for no one at all. So therefore no one to know it or even say it is the case. Yeah. And even starvation is an illusory process, mm -hmm. as though it could, <laughs> yeah, get rid of itself one day. And it's yeah. not really necessarily the last <laughs> thirst thing. There's no real again. Oh, of course, yeah. Well, but it keeps the. I mean, it. it well, yeah, if it feels it, like it could get something out yeah. of this, then that's that. Maybe is another. Yeah. Thing. Feeling that, yeah, there's something missing, right? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. It's already done, yes. I like the word already, you might have noticed. Um, it's funny. I've been a hardcore spiritual seeker for about 25 years. And I, I, 
I tell myself that I've given all that up now. But and then I hear this message and I kid myself that I'm just coming along to these meetings because I've got nothing better to do. But I'm so I know that's the ego just playing that trick because I'm obviously still seeking. Hmm. But there's there's no wrong or right. No. If yeah. seeking is happening, that's what's happening. If it's stopped happening, you know, there's no real stopping of anything because no real timeline. But if there's not seeking happening, that too is freedom. It's all just totally yeah. free. Yeah. And you know, it um just to be clear, if someone comes to a meeting, that doesn't mean, oh, I must be a seeker. You know, it, it, I, I must be seeking something because I'm at a meeting. Some, you know, there could just be meeting happening for the joy of it, you know. Mm, true, yeah. There's no confirmation or validation that anyone is here because they need something. Uh, uh, there is already no one to be needing anything. There's just needless freedom, which can appear as need, which is totally free to be that too. Yeah. Dropping the uh, so-called spiritual seeking has been very freeing, it feels. Mm. Yeah. So unconditional love was never lost, was never missing, never needed anyone's validation or worthiness, never needed anyone to behave a certain way, never needed anything, already everything, even the need and the attempts, all of the striving and the seeking on behalf of nothing and no one is just simply unconditional love as well, of course. Unconditional love being boundless cannot be limited and therefore cannot be said to be this and not that. Everything is this. Everything is all inclusive. It's it's all totally encompassing. So unconditional love was never at a distance from anything that's appearing to happen. It is everything that's appearing to happen. And so the sense that that could be looked for is the sense that it's missing an unconditional love. Again, being boundless can appear to be felt and sensed as anything and everything, including the felt sense that something is missing, but that is just simply an illusory appearance, which is not wrong, of course. It's not bad. It's not anything. It's not a mistake. But there's no where else other than there's no where else and there's no when else and there's no one to be going, finding, becoming, achieving, seeking, or to stop seeking. It just is already timeless, unconditional freedom and love, which is totally beyond limitation at all. So it's simply everything, therefore. The exposure points out abundantly never for anyone because there's no separation for there to be anyone to hear this or know it objectively at all but just simply pointing out abundantly that everything is this unconditional love which is sought for in every direction and yearned for but it is all there is it's everything there is only unconditional love Thank you. Much love. Thank you, Alexis. Thank you. Thank you, Alexis. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.